Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. I'm your host, Bob Manuk. If you like today's message, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more. We're continuing in our series of Church and State. Today's, uh, we're starting a new chapter it's called Chapter 5, Media. And this is Episode 5.1, Mainstream Media. Fox News anchor Bill Hemmer interviews former Democratic candidate, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard who in 2019 was running for the nomination to be the Democratic candidate for President of the USA, who was accused by fellow candidate Hillary Clinton of being a Russian asset. In the second part of the video, Tucker Carlson comments on the concerted effort of the D.C. establishment and the media to bury the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election. So, here's the video. Well, Hillary Clinton who failed to hit the reset button with Russia under the Obama administration, well, she has a history, as you know, of accusing political opponents of being connected to the Kremlin. Remember back in 2019 when crooked Hillary tried to destroy fellow Democrat Tulsi Gabbard and accused her of being a Russian asset? Russians, they have a bunch of sites and bots and other ways of supporting her mm -hmm. so far. And... That's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not, because she's also a Russian right. uh, asset. She didn't say Tulsi's Gabbard's name there, but it was later confirmed that that's exactly who she was talking about. But it seems that the only one using Russia to take down American politicians is Hillary. Durham's indictment of Michael Sussman exposes what we've known all along. The Trump-Russia collusion narrative was a pure hoax perpetrated by the Clinton campaign via Fusion GPS and the phony Steele dossier. Now, doesn't that make Hillary Clinton an asset of the Kremlin instead? Joining us now is former presidential candidate and representative Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, Tulsi, thanks so much for being here. You, you, you. I'm sure you remember better than anyone else when you were accused by Hillary Clinton of being a Russian asset. Do any of these new revelations uh, Confirm what you already knew, or, 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 or all along, did you know they were making this up to smear political opponents? Uh, yeah, it, it confirms what what I knew to be true, which is is something bigger than what happened to me. Uh, it really points to the fact that we have a situation in our country where the powerful elite, people like Hillary Clinton and those around her, the deep state, the media, they're all colluding to destroy outsiders who they deem uh, as posing a threat to their power. So essentially what they do is they, they create this dictatorship where those who are outsiders, those who put country first, those who are not afraid to challenge the establishment and, and those who don't toe the line, uh, they do all they can to silence and censor and eliminate these outsiders that they deem pose a threat to their power. Uh, and this is what is so dangerous. This is much bigger than, than any individual. It's, it's actually a threat to our democracy and to the American people. And, and their arrogance in believing that they, they have the right to do this mm. and doing so without any regard for who gets hurt in the process or how it actually undermines uh, our country, uh, our democracy, and, and damages uh, and, and hurts the interests of the American people. The American people deserve better than this. And the worst part, Pete, is they get away with it. It's true. Uh, you, when, you were, when you heard her say that you were a favorite of the Russians, did she pre present any evidence of that? And, and when the media examined it, were you given a fair, uh, a fair course, a court of public opinion, a fair opportunity to actually respond to that? Uh, I'm, I'm smiling a little bit, Pete, because you and I both know the answer to that yeah. is no. And the answer to that is no, uh, because from the very beginning, again, this happened to me. It also happened to Donald Trump. It just points to this is not about Democrats or Republicans. It's about their concerted uh, and collective effort working together to destroy and silence those who challenge their power. Uh, and so, no, the media did not challenge or ask her for evidence uh, in, in the clip you played. There was no request for, hey, if, you know, point out the proof to this pretty heinous allegation against a sitting member of Congress 
with highest levels of classifications, uh, security clearances, also a, a soldier currently serving uh, in the Army Reserves. I mean, you look at all of these things and, mm -hmm. you, and you see how absolutely ludicrous it is, but it just points to, to the fact that um, they do so completely arrogantly and, and without hesitation. And, and really, here's the danger, is that as long as you have people in power who are willing to sacrifice the interests of our country to serve their own selfish interests, rather than putting themselves last and serving the best interests of the country, if we allow this to continue, then we, the American people, lose the country that we love. Yeah, the worst thing is, is that they feel like they got away with it. They feel like yeah. it worked. They got their way. And now folks like Jake Sullivan, who was front and center in pushing the smear against Donald Trump, well, he's the national security advisor, making the rest of us wonder whether or not they'd be willing to do that to any one of us if they had the opportunity. Tulsi Gabbard, thanks for shooting straight. You always do, and we appreciate thanks, your Pete. time. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, happy Friday. So much happens in the final weeks of a presidential campaign that it's easy to lose track of it. Whatever happened to this or that development in the news, you can't remember, a lot falls between the cracks. There's overload. Politicians know this, obviously, and they take advantage of it. If they can derail a story until after Election Day, often that story goes away forever. No one really remembers. And that was precisely the thinking behind the Democrats' response to Hunter Biden's laptop. They knew from the first day that the contents of that laptop were in fact genuine. Look at what's on there. It may be theoretically possible that some foreign intel service would Photoshop a picture of Hunter Biden's crotch, mostly for self-amusement, but a hundred pictures of Hunter Biden's crotch adorned with M&Ms? No, no Russian did that. Those pictures were real. And so were the huge numbers of emails and texts from Hunter Biden explaining how he was selling access to his father, then the vice president, and how his father was helping him do it. So in order to enrich his family, Joe Biden changed this country's foreign policy. That happened. And it was the real crime that Hunter Biden's laptop revealed. That was the real scandal. If voters had understood that, if someone had told them, it might have affected the results of the election. So they couldn't know. The permanent bureaucracy hid that from the country. In October, a group of corrupt intelligence officials, 50 of them, whose names will live forever in shame, signed a letter blaming Vladimir Putin for the laptop. Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinformation, dozens of former intel officials say. That was the headline in Politico. That was a lie from top to bottom. It was totally unsupported by evidence or intelligence. But it came just in time for the presidential debate. That was the point. And Joe Biden picked it up and wheeled it, it like a club from the stage. We are in a situation where we have foreign company, countries trying to interfere in the outcome of our election. His old, own national security advisor told him that what is happening with his buddy, well, I, won't, I, shouldn't, well, I will, his buddy Rudy Giuliani, he's being used as a Russian pawn. He's being fed information that is Russian, that is not true. His own national security advisor. That's probably right, but it was a lie. And just two months after that debate, the truth began to leak out. According once again to Politico, the Intel world's favorite media tool, quote, a person with firsthand knowledge of the investigation conceded that actually Hunter Biden's laptop was not a Russian fabrication. It was real, real enough to be used as evidence in an ongoing investigation into, quote, potential money laundering and Hunter Biden's foreign ties. Hunter Biden, we learned, was facing possible indictment for what was on the laptop. The DOJ was looking into the Ukrainian and Chinese businessmen who'd been paying Hunter to get close to his father. And they wanted to know why his father was apparently getting 10% of those deals. That's what we learned. And that's all we learned. For six months, we heard nothing more. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden got a lot richer. He sold a book that no one read for millions of dollars. Simon & Schuster paid him off. He sold paintings you would never hang anywhere for possibly even more than that. We don't know because the identities of the people who bought them are still secret. But what you do know for certain is that Hunter Biden was never charged with anything. Why is that? It's kind of weird if you think about it, given that Biden himself, Hunter Biden, admitted on television that the lap laptop actually didn't come from the Kremlin. Watch. 
was that your laptop? For real, I don't know. I know, but, but you know that's is, this is. I really a, don't know. Okay. The answer is that's you don't know yes answer. or no if the laptop was yours. I don't have any yours. idea. I have no idea. So could not. have been yours. Of course, certainly it, 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 there could be a laptop out there that was stolen from me. There could be that I was hacked. It could be that that was the that it was Russian intelligence. It could be that it was stolen from me. Oh. So you'd think a clip like that, where he admits it, the 50 intel officials were all lying. You'd think that clip would be a key piece of evidence in the probe into Hunter Biden's finances. Where did all this money come from? Why are foreign governments sending him millions of dollars? Emails on that laptop directly implicate Hunter Biden in his family's foreign influence peddling operation. Joe Biden, his brother, his son. So why haven't we heard anything to this day about any of this from the Department of Justice? Good question. And today we got our answer. Naturally, it came from Politico. The magazine reported, meaning it was told, likely for complex reasons we can never really know, that the U.S. attorney in the state of Delaware, a man called David Weiss, had in fact buried the Hunter Biden case and done so on purpose because he was asked to do it. David Weiss decided to do all of this, Politico told us, because he wanted, quote, to avoid taking any actions that could alert the public to the existence of the case in the middle of a presidential election. Well, they're just saying it out loud now. He didn't want to hurt Joe Biden, in other words. And he did this at the request of the Biden family and their lawyers. We learned that from the Politico piece, too. It includes this quote. To Weiss's credit, he listened, said a person involved in the discussions. In other words, he listened to the Bidens and their lawyers. And because he did that, apparently... David Weiss has kept his job as a federal prosecutor. Now, Ben Schreckinger of Politico, needless to say, strongly approves of this. It's not a subversion of justice. It's the right thing. Quote, Weiss's decision to avoid revealing the investigation, a move that might have boosted Donald Trump's campaign, even at the cost of politicizing the probe, was consistent with his sober-minded approach to the job. Attaboy. Got that? When you cover for a Democratic presidential campaign, you are, according to Politico and Ben Schreckinger, a sober-minded prosecutor. You did the right thing. Good job, David Weiss. You used our justice system to get the right team into the White House. Hope you get rewarded. And in case you have any doubt that that's exactly what happened and nothing to do with the time frame before the election, you should know, and you may already know, that the FBI had Hunter Biden's laptop for an entire year before the election. We know they made a forensic copy of the hard drive in 2019. But they did nothing and they still have it. Now they don't have time. They're too busy hunting down senior citizens who talk about election integrity, the fabled insurrectionists. They can't do anything about the subversion of Americans' foreign policy by the Bidens because they're busy with the insurrectionists. Maybe someday, when it no longer matters, Politico will tell us that story. In the meantime, we can look forward to more treatment like this for dissidents who oppose the regime in any way. As a reminder, here's what happens to any American who mocks the people in power. Exclusive footage you're looking at right now from CNN as the FBI arrives at Roger Stone's residence in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, taking him into custody. They arrived before dawn there, before 6 a.m. or just after 6 a.m. A dozen officers were told. That was Roger Stone, of course. They rousted him and his wife, both of them senior citizens, by the way because he made the mistake of texting unflattering things about federal prosecutors and the government read his texts. But Hunter Biden doesn't have to worry about any of that. He doesn't have to worry about the SWAT team showing up at his house at dawn with a CNN camera crew in tow. Hunter Biden can violate all the federal gun laws he wants, and he has, and he knows he'll never be charged. Merrick Garland works for his dad, so he's fine. He can do literally whatever he wants, and as we've seen, he definitely has. But there's a different standard for you. If you step out of line, you're done. Hopefully you are seeing a trend on how the system works and it should concern you. We are being manipulated by our politicians and the media to believe and vote a certain way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to discern truth. Help us to discern as, as, as we hear these different messages and the narratives and we hear the politicians and we hear the authorities and uh, just all this information that's out there and all the noise that is out there, Lord, help us to sort through it and embrace the truth and know what is factual and how we should proceed uh, in our life, in our elections, um, in pursuing truth.
In Jesus' name, amen. Watch for our next episode in the Church of State series titled Episode 5.2, Social Media. This is Bob Monuck from RWM Blue Water Ministry declaring blessings on you and yours until we meet again. Amen.